Ed Stevens from Yamaha, here to talk to you about some engine maintenance and particularly what we do about cleaning our engine uh, for daily use and if we're going to put the, uh, our boat into storage for the winter time or a long period of time. First off, we'd probably check and part of our periodic checks would be the oil level. There we just check our dipstick, keep it nice and clean, replace and firmly check the dipstick. It's important to keep the oil level of our four-stroke engine uh, topped up to the manufacturer's recommendation level uh, between the minimum and maximum uh, levels on the dipstick with the engine roughly in a horizontal plane here so that the, the engine sump is, uh, is level. Next thing we're going to look at is the overall appearance and condition of our engine. Um, if there's a lot of signs of any salt water or if we've been operating in particularly rough conditions or for say a training center or a sailing club and we've been doing a lot of re reversing work, um, we might want to wash with fresh water all over the engine here. The only area we need to avoid is the air intake um, at the front of the engine here. Any fresh water that we've uh, sprayed around our engine would naturally drain from the engine tray here or you can tilt the engine up and the rest of the water would drain uh, out of the front of the engine where the cables and fuel hose come into the engine. Once the engine has dried off a little bit from the fresh water, we then apply some sort, sort of protection spray, either a weather protection spray like this or some form of oil-based spray like duck oil rather than something that would be a conductive spray. Uh, we try and avoid something that's a conductive spray and just more an oil-based spray to protect the, uh, the surface of the engine and all the electrical components there. We then check with some grease and we check our control cable positions here um, to ensure that they are well greased our steering fittings on the front of the engine to ensure that they are well greased and any other grease points on the engine that we identify in the owner's manual. Whilst we have the engine uncovered like this and we're doing a cleaning routine, we'd also make the effort to connect the flushing adapter here. This would then flush fresh water through the power head uh, and circulate through the engine. We would see water going in here um, uh, at whatever hose pressure we can do. We would not have the engine running, but we would then see the water coming out of the propeller hub as the exhaust and various, various points around the leg of the engine. It's important to get all the salt water out of the engine, um, especially for a long storage period of time, and it avoids the corrosive properties uh, of the salt water. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna check our propeller uh, and grease that up. So I've just removed the split pin, then we're gonna unwind the propeller nut. Whenever I do this, I make sure that the kill cord is removed from the engine, just as a general safety check and the ignition key is out of the ignition. Sliding the propeller off like that, make sure we have the nut and the propeller furniture, the thrust washer here. Um, we inspect this for wear as we go and we look for anything uh, around the gearbox seal here, particularly fishing line or anything like that that may cause uh, a breach of the gearbox seal. We would apply some of our grease to put this back on so that this surface is well greased reapply the thrust washer, apply more grease to the prop shaft here, reapply the propeller, check our washer uh, and washers that are in the end and then reapply the castle nut, tighten to the appropriate torque and then reinsert the split pin that would stop the castle nut from spinning. Another really important part of keeping your engine reliable is actually keeping the battery that starts your engine and the charging mechanism back to that battery uh, clean. So we see often that battery terminals are uh, corroded or just have uh, a level of rust on them that just increases the resistance and reduces the effectiveness of what we're gonna do. So we check our battery terminals, we clean them with maybe a little bit of, of emery cloth or paper or Scotch-Brite so that we know that we've got a good connecting and bonding surface here. We'd also um, try and use a spanner type terminal with a nut like that, rather than uh, a wing nut kind of terminal here, because it's harder to get this as tight in order to maintain a good uh, surface area of contact, because this will only really go as far as you can go finger tight. Once, once these are on in a clean way, we would then apply some more grease over to the top of the terminal and that forms a barrier to protect the battery terminals from salt water and just the general corrosive weather on the water. 